In this lesson, we look at flying statuses for the T-6 at Vance Air Force Base. The flying status is primarily based on winds, cloud coverage and ceiling, and visibility, but can also be based on other factors like ATC facility outages, RSU controller availability, and the flying schedule. For example, the flying status will only be solo if current and forecast crosswinds are less than 15 knots and clouds permit either a student pattern solo or solo flight to the MOA. The flying status will only be solo if there are students on the daily flying schedule scheduled to solo or currently airborne solo. Additionally, there must also be an RSU controller monitoring or controlling the east side pattern. The supervisor of flying, which is a T6, T1, or T38 instructor pilot that sits in the air traffic control tower, sets the status based on current and forecasted weather as well as pilot reports. The SOF will update RAPCON and the operations supervisors when the flying status changes. If clouds prevent flying to and from the MOA in advance, or the MOAs are unusable due to cloud coverage, the MOA status will either be dual or unusable. If a portion of the MOAs are unusable for solo students, the status will be select area solo. For example, if east MOAs are reported unusable, but the north MOAs and Cormi stereo route are mostly clear, the status may be select area solo to the north. If MOAs are usable, but clouds and route are few or scattered, the status may be formation solo, since IMC is avoidable and IPE support is directly available to the solo student. If weather does not permit student solo flight to the MOA, it may still be possible to solo in the traffic pattern only. At Vance, the ceiling must be 3,500 feet MSL and three mile statute visibility for a solo pattern status. The dual pattern at Vance has the same ceiling and visibility requirements as the solo pattern. In order for there to be a visual traffic pattern at Vance, the ceiling must be at least 2,800 feet MSL with three statute miles visibility. When the ceiling is between 1,500 feet AGL and 2,200 feet AGL, and the visibility is at least three statute miles, the pattern status will be restricted. The restricted pattern is named so because, while the visual pattern is available for touch and goes, some restrictions apply. Most notably, in the restricted pattern, breakouts and the overhead pattern from radar entry are not permitted. There may or may not be a designated alternate airport when the status is restricted, depending on current and forecasted weather conditions. During ground ops, you will tell clearance delivery your local squawk and profile. Clearance will read back your squawk and profile and then likely clear you for the Vance 1 departure when the status is restricted pattern or worse. On departure, maintain 500 feet below the clouds unless cleared the Vance 1 departure or cleared a stereo route. When flying in the visual traffic pattern, you are VFR and must adhere to VFR weather minimums. Vance is a Class D airport, and the radar release points of Echo and Foxtrot are in Class E airspace. To operate VFR at these locations, you must have at least three statute miles of in-flight visibility and remain 500 feet below and 2,000 feet horizontal from clouds. Breaking out of the visual pattern during restricted patterns is not allowed due to VFR weather minimums. At Vance, in the T6, we fly 1,000 feet AGL pattern altitude. When breaking out of the pattern, we climb to 3,000 feet MSL at Vance, which is about 1,700 feet AGL. If you were to break out of the restricted pattern, it would either place you in the clouds or within 500 feet of the bases, depending on what the actual ceiling is. There are three ways to enter the east side pattern when the status is restricted. From initial takeoff, after flying the ILS to the center runway and then pulling closed or turning crosswind, or from echo or foxtrot and then executing a straight in. If flying the ILS, at DA, you will either be executing a touch and go or a missed approach, based on whether the IP says runway in sight or runway not in sight, after the student says DA. Either way, deconfigure the aircraft once climbing, maintain centerline ground track, and do not climb above 1800 feet MSL. Tower will tell you to contact Eastside, channel 4. On channel 4, you say your call sign, center, request closed. You will either be told close approved, center extend, or turn crosswind. If told to extend, continue flying centerline ground track and stay below 1800 feet MSL. If still upwind at about 3 DME from Vance, turn crosswind and once past Highway 81, climb to 2300 feet MSL 
and enter the east side pattern at initial from outside downwind. If the status were better than restricted pattern, you would break out once past Highway 81 and enter the pattern at BFR entry. To enter the Vance traffic pattern from Echo or Foxtrot, you must execute a straight-in. Since aircraft cannot break out in a restricted pattern, the straight-in is done to separate aircraft at 45 to initial from those entering from the radar release point by 500 feet. Here the red aircraft is on the outside pattern at 1000 feet AGL, and the blue aircraft is entering the restricted pattern from Echo. Between 2 and 5 miles, the blue aircraft will be at 500 feet AGL. If the blue aircraft did not execute a straight in and flew 1000 feet AGL to initial for the overhead pattern, this would cause a traffic conflict with the red aircraft which could not be resolved by the red aircraft executing a climbing breakout. When flying the Echo or Foxtrot recoveries, you are IFR until told to contact channel 4 at which point you are VFR. You cannot legally be VFR until you meet the VFR weather minimums. When entering the restricted pattern from radar release, there are three possible scenarios that can occur. First, not breaking out of the weather by Echo or Foxtrot. Second, Breaking out but not having VFR weather minimums requiring a contact approach to be flown. Third, meeting the minimum VFR ceiling and visibility requirements and reporting Echo or Foxtrot. When 5 miles from Echo or Foxtrot, you should be at 2800 feet MSL, which is the ATC minimum vectoring altitude near the radar release points, to give you the best shot of being 500 feet or more below the clouds. In Scenario 1, if you are still in the clouds at 2800 feet MSL, turn to a 090 heading, climb to 2900 feet MSL, and tell approach or arrival you did not break out of the clouds, and request an instrument approach or to divert to your alternate airport based on the weather and your fuel state. Scenario 2 means in-flight visibility is worse than 3 statute miles or the ceiling is between 2800 feet and 3300 feet MSL, meaning at 2800 feet MSL you are not at least 500 feet below the bases of the clouds. In this scenario, with approach you must request and be approved to fly a contact approach, which allows you to descend to 2300 feet MSL, at which point you can then cancel IFR if VFR weather minimums are met. Like a visual approach, the contact approach means you are still on an IFR flight plan, meaning you do not have to adhere to VFR weather minimums. As seen in the AIM, to fly a contact approach, you must request it and be clear of clouds with at least one mile visibility. Scenario 3 is the same situation as weather better than restricted pattern. It means the cloud ceiling is 3300 feet MSL or higher, and at 2800 feet MSL and 5 miles from radar release, you say your call sign. Echo or Foxtrot, and approach will say contact tower channel 4. When the weather does not allow the overhead pattern, but is at least 504 on a 35 right day or 604 on a 17 left day, the status will be button hook 
and an alternate airport will be designated. Button hook means T6s will fly the VUR or GPS, Alpha or Bravo approach, pilot's discretion for the approach type flown, and T1s and T38s will fly the VUR, tack in or GPS approach to the outside runway. When button hook, aircraft funnel back to Vance utilizing the outside runways and normally terminate the approach to a full stop unless the SOF approves multiple approaches. The center runway will not be used unless coordinated with the SOF and approved by ATC. The VOR and GPS approaches to the east side runway have a couple gotchas to be aware of. First off, the final approach fix and missed approach point are only 2.5 miles apart. The altitude to lose is approximately 900 feet for 17 left and 1,000 feet for 35 right, so any delay in descending to MDA after crossing the final approach fix may result in having to execute a missed approach at 4 DME from the Vance VOR. The next gotcha is the missed approach point is 4 miles from the middle of Vance Air Force Base, where the VOR is located. At 500 to 600 feet AGL, 4 miles from the runway, it is difficult, if not impossible, to see the runways. You are far more likely to just see the base water tower or aircraft hangars. Luckily, the 11217 specifies that in the U.S. National Airspace System, you are only required to see the airfield environment not the runway environment like with ICAO regulations to continue past the missed approach point and commence the circle visually. The last big gotcha with these approaches is the final approach course is not aligned with the runway. The protected circling radius is 1.8 DME from the runway threshold so continue inbound on the final approach course from 4 DME to 1.8 DME then maneuver to intercept extended runway centerline. When the weather is less than button hook, but at least 200 and 3 quarter mile visibility, the expected status is published recoveries. Airborne aircraft will return to Vance via the center runway ILS. With this status, the airfield is operating on single runway operations. RAPCON limits the number of aircraft airborne to 15 during published recoveries due to workload, approach sequencing, and single runway constraints. For this reason, T6s and T38s operate on what's called a block plan. The block plan is put in place by the SOF. It is simply a two or two and a half hour alternating window in which each airframe can fly. For example, 15 T38s may have the block and fly from 10 to 12 o'clock, and then 15 T6s may fly from 12 to two o'clock. This block plan is in place until weather improves to button hook or better or the status changes to standby or stand down. Aircraft may launch out of their block on out and back and cross country sorties if coordinated with the op soup and approved by the SOF. Standby and stand down are the last two statuses to discuss. They're pretty straightforward. Standby means the status is not yet determined due to marginal weather conditions or while waiting for a PIREP from a weather ship. Stand down means flight operations are ceased for the remainder of the day.